Jackson. A long time ago, not far from here, there was a perfect little town. It had everything that you could want from a town. Beautiful whitewashed houses, a market square, a bakery of course. But it also had something that it did not want. A beast. A beast with a thousand teeth. The villagers who in the daytime before had always been roaming around doing what they wanted now. They would keep their doors locked. If they had to go out to go to the shops, they'd run out quickly and jump inside as soon as they could and spend the rest of their doors huddled on their living rooms on their computers because they knew if they went outside, they might be eaten by the beast with a snack! And they'd be gone. In the night, no one at all dared roam the streets, where they were sure to be swallowed by the beast when the sun had set. The townspeople, as you may expect, were not happy. And so they went to the mayor. They went and they banged on the door of the mayor's house. But when they banged, they found it open. For the mayor was gone. He had already fled with his family and his possessions into the countryside and left the townspeople to fend for themselves. And so the townspeople called a great meeting and they decided that whosoever could rid the town of the beast would be crowned mayor. They would get the mayor's exclusive townhouse in a beautiful central location with supplies of bread flour, lentils, tin tomatoes, a veritable mountain of toilet paper, and an unlimited subscription to Netflix. And the rest of them would live happily ever after. Now in this town, there was also a pastry chef and her son, Jack. Oh, hello, Jack. How's it going? Got big orders today. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, I, I've been thinking, and I think I'm pretty sure that I'm the one who can rid the town of that beast once and for all. What, you? Yeah, imagine, imagine us not having to live under the bakery table. Imagine living in the mayor's house and having an unlimited supply of toilet roll. Oh, Jack, <laughs> you know I love you, but, you know, you're the smallest boy in town. Don't be so ridiculous. Plus, we've got orders for Phil, to Phil. Take these um, lovely trays out of the oven. They've got pastries for all. If you can take them across town, but beware of the beast. If you don't come back before nightfall, you know what might happen. Aww. And so, Jack set off through the town. Of course, it had been some time since Jack was last out in the winding alleyways at the city centre. This was the time before town planning, of course. The streets were not straight. They were windy and small and dark. And soon, Jack had absolutely no idea where he was. He had no idea of where he had to get to. And worst of all, he realised that it was getting dark. If he didn't find somewhere soon to stay for the night, he might become the latest snack of the beast. No! No chance, mate! Not letting the beast in here! Please, somebody, let me in. It's getting dark and the beast is coming. Please let me in! Get away, you! You horrible little boy! behind an abandoned stairway to huddle behind his cake and hope, hope against hope, that the beast would not find him this night. Enough! No, beast! Beast, please, please, please don't eat me! I 
the smallest boy in the village. I, I'm, I'm nothing but skin and bones. Please don't make me. I'll make, I'll make a deal with you. What do you mean, a deal? Well, I promise that if you promise not to eat me, that I'll make you a lifetime of those treats you just had, the ones with all the pink icing on top that you loved so much. Now let me think. Give it your best shot. No, no, 